Welcome to the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. I'm Jeff DeVeronica with my co-host Steve Bradley alongside Steve. Spring has sprung. There's no snow on the ground as we record this now, but you never know, you right? Do, you do never know, but games have been played, even softball and baseball games. So it's official, Jeff. We're going to talk some girls across here on this this program. And uh, we got a lot of spring sports coming up uh, all, all spring long. So make sure you, you stay tuned uh, here on uh, Rock Sports Now on our YouTube live or our YouTube channel. And we're going to start with um, a, a program that was built from 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 ashes or, or dust, really, from the foundation up. HFL Girls Across, and they've had, I believe, one coach in their history, unless I'm not remembering this properly, which is happens a lot these days. The uh, current coach would remember if they've had another. He would. Coach, let's so. let's bring on to our specialties hotline the HFL Cougars. Joining us now, the head coach, uh, Mr. Kevin O'Connell, also senior uh, defensive midi Maeve O'Brien. Uh, wave for us, Maeve, please. Wave. Can we do a wave? There we go. And also, uh, I learned that from Brother Weeze. I'll Maeve tell you more wave. about that later. Maeve, Maeve wave. wave. And also, senior attack Whitley Easton. She's going to Mercyhurst, and Maeve's going to Harvard. So, ladies, congratulations on those two great schools you're going to. Well done. Um, and Mr. O'Connell joins us now, Coach O'Connell, if you will. Kevin, welcome back to the show. I believe, Steve, if I remember this correctly, this may be the first time we've had a video interview with Coach O'Connell. Pre-pandemic might be the last time I had him on the show, and I don't know why that is, because he's an easy get. I, I guess that's on you, then. Yeah, that's my fault. You guys, well, it's become, kidding aside, how do you keep, and this is a good first question for you, Coach, how do you keep the standards so high? Because the expectation now is either you win sectionals or it's not a successful season. You know, that's 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 tough um not if you look at some of your final scores in the championship games the last year it's not that tough but how do you do that kevin how do you how do you keep the standard so high with these with these these girls well we don't change the standard we have the same expectation every year and it, it doesn't change you know and and again I'm, I'm fortunate because i have girls like whitley and Maeve that care about the program are willing to work for the program and that's what helps us maintain the success that we're able to have in the postseason play. Maeve, uh, growing up in the program, when did you get started and how aware were you of the success as you've come through? Um, I started in first grade, I believe, maybe kindergarten. I don't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, success was definitely around. I would always go to the sectional games. I would always, you know, try and catch a couple of varsity games a year. And the success was definitely there. I saw it from the beginning. And I'm just blessed to have been able to be a part of that success, too. Willie, it's 12 Section 5 titles in 13 years for this program, nine in a row. Um, do you all talk about championships? Is that coach, is he on, on you during the season? Like, you're not going to get that brick if you don't do this. Or is it just kind of, you're all aware of it? Um, Sometimes it's like, we talk about it, but not really. We're more like focused on every game going one at a time. You know, we don't talk about Steve, Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my daughter's eight years old. I had to say it. Um, Steve Bradley, Kevin O'Connell is is going to be our G&G Fitness Coach of the Week. So I want to say congratulations on that. And you may have won the award before. I didn't look it up. I don't care. You, you, I don't know anybody that doesn't like you. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they, I'm sure there are he, people that don't. He can probably introduce you to a couple of coaches. Yeah. Well, he's a basketball <laughs> official too. But um, who were your big influences as a coach when you were growing up, or who's who's helped shape you as a, as a coach? Uh, coach O'Connell said, "Thank you to G and G Fitness, Coach." Well, I tell you, it's a great question, and I was very fortunate. I mean, my biggest influence from the coaching world came from Jim Cox, Jerry Everling, Neil Atkins, and then Dave Chamberlain. Um, you know, at the time, I don't know if I truly appreciated the messages that they were teaching me, but whenever I'm coaching, I can always go back to something they said or something they did that influenced me to be the coach that I am today. I mean, those first three gentlemen are icon coaches in Rush Henrietta, and then Dave Chamberlain obviously speaks for himself for what he did with the Monroe Community College based uh baseball program and uh those are the gentlemen that i reflect on and i learn from and then i've been very fortunate that once i started coaching lacrosse i immediately had two mentors uh jeff mckee who i work with every day an all-american at syracuse and then rick pound who actually got me into coaching girls lacrosse 
um, which there are times that I, 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 I yell at him because I'm frustrated. <laughs> and it's funny how things come full circle because now Rick Pound works with me um, at, at HFL um, with the girls lacrosse program. So he started me into the lacrosse world and now he's with me. So it's, uh, it's been great. It's been wonderful. So, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but you didn't play lacrosse growing up and you learned it as an adult and coached. What was that like? Uh, it, it was it was really a lot of fun, but it was a challenge, um, you know, because, again, I didn't play. I played baseball all through college, but uh, it was a unique opportunity that was presented to me. And I went to clinics. Again, I picked the brains of Rick Pound. And, and Jeff Rich, Rich, Rich Curtis, I think you talked to quite a bit. You used to tell me about that. Curtis, you'd pick his brain a bit. Rich Curtis. I, yeah, originally on, I used to work some camps with him. And, and listen, you know, I'm not afraid to admit it. You have to go watch people that know what they're doing, steal their ideas, take them to what you want to do, and then you tweak them a little bit and turn them into yours. But, you know, that's how any good coach learns is you learn from other coaches. And quite honestly, I took a lot of my basketball now and turn it into the lacrosse field. Uh, it's a lot of the same concepts, just a bigger field. Uh, and you move the ball differently than you do in basketball. But to this day, a lot of the drills I run are basketball drills. All right, let's ask the ladies now. I prepped you for this. Now we're going to start with you, Maeve. If people ask you at Easter dinner, hey, what's your coach like? <clears throat> what do you tell them? He's definitely full of energy. Um, <laughs> every <laughs> practice is intense, both like – you know, in a good way and sometimes in a bad way, but there, it's definitely fun with him, with all of his energy and passion. And, you know, he's such a wealth of knowledge too. Like I learn so much from him each and every day. Like he's just, he's a great guy to be around and he's a lot of fun and he definitely keeps us on our toes too. Whitley, um, coach mentioned that the standard doesn't change. As an athlete coming in, knowing what the expectation is, how much does that help you and your teammates knowing what your your goals are and what you're shooting for? Um, we know that every single practice we're expected to come and we're supposed to work hard and also have fun. And I think that it really helps us because when we're working hard and having fun, we're getting a lot better. And then we're going into games and we're taking what we used in practice and doing our best. Let's uh, take a quick break, come back in part two. We're going to talk about the two wins of the season so far. One of them a blowout, one of them a really good win over Spencerport. So we'll talk more with HFL Girls Lacrosse right here on the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. There's a path to success full of challenges, rewards, inspiration, and strength. A strength that only the U.S. Army Reserve can give you. The skills and experiences you'll get will give you an advantage in your civilian life. Stay close to home, train to develop your strengths, and get on a path to success. Find out more at GoArmy.com reserve. For more information, contact Syracuse Army Recruiting Center, 315-449-2830. They're strong. Then there's Army Strong, paid for by the U.S. Army. You know, whether you come here as a sixth grader or a ninth grader, you have to spend your, you know, four or five, six years here and just get involved in so many different things. And then you're going to go out and set fire on the earth. When you get through McQuay Jesuit, you're not going to fail when you get out in the world. Tell you about my friends at Bath Fitter. 30 years across the country they've been doing this stuff. 20 plus years in Rochester. You don't have that kind of longevity without treating your customers right, doing great quality work. Please check them out online, bathfitter.com. Call the local office at 617-0007. It's Bath Fitter, Rochester. Don't be a DYI diva and try to do it yourself. Don't screw it up. Let the pros do it. Remodel with confidence. Remodel with Bath Fitter. And please tell them you heard about it right here from Jeff Veronica on the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. We're brought to you by Savile's Pizza. There are plenty of professional sports teams in Rochester, but there's also a lot of great high school sports action in each town in our area. When's the last time you checked out a high school game? Session 5 sports are about more than just wins and losses. They're about teaching teamwork, dedication, and discipline. So support the kids who play for your school. Get out and watch a high school game today. For more information, including schedules, rosters, and stats, 
visit section5.org. That's sectionv.org. Brought to you by the Monroe County League and Section 5. In doing the work you do, if you're hurt, we'll help you through. Don't be fooled. Video hearings are as critical as appearing in person. Make sure your rights are protected. Your employer has trained specialists on their side. And the judges work for New York State. The only person on your side is the attorney at your side. Connors and Ferris, your workers come attorneys. Local McDonald's operators care about our local schools, teams, and student-athletes. That's why they support the return of high school athletics in the Rochester area and around the state. See you before or after the big game at McDonald's. Welcome back, Section 5. Game on! Welcome back to the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. Jeff DeVeronica and Steve Bradley with part two of our interview with HFL. That's Honey High Falls Lima, Girls Lacrosse. And this will be our U.S. Army segment where you tell you about uh, the U.S. Army. It can be a uh, part of your future, pay for your college education. <clears throat> Beg your pardon, there are more than 150 different careers in the U.S. Army. they got some really cool programs now where there are uh, like a $50,000 incentive. They're trying to get more competitive with the workforce because they know uh, they need to compete uh, for young people with other lines of work, just like a job. And um, so check them out, call your local recruiting office and talk to them about uh, uh, about the Army could be part of your story uh, moving forward. So thanks to the Army for sponsoring our program. All right, HFL Girls Across. We have Coach Kevin O'Connell with us, also Whitley Easton and Maeve O'Brien, two of the leaders for the Cougars, who are nine-time defending Section 5 Class C champions, off to a terrific start this season. They won their first two games 17-1 to over uh, Livonia Avon, and then a big 13-9 to win over Spencerport, which is always in the mix and has raised their level over the last five, six years, too. Um, and in that game, Whitley, you had five goals, two assists. Claire Ruff, the uh, last, last name sounds familiar. She had three goals, one assist. Shay Angelo, a couple goals. Paige Kidd, a couple goals. And your goalie is Lily Brady. Uh, Whitley, let me ask you about that game. Going off of a game where you, you won big and then raising your intensity for Spencer support, how do you get motivated and did you all know from the start, that first half, that you guys were locked in a battle with Spencer support? What did it take to win that game? Whitley? Um, I think that we, we talked before the game about getting really excited for when everyone scores and just really um, having our energy really high up. Like we talked about it on the bus, we talked about it before. And I think that when we were locked in, even when the other team scored, we didn't get down. When we made a turnover, we didn't get down. We just kept working. And we really stayed locked in that game. And I think that it really helped having our energy really high up and being really supportive of one another. Kevin, when you look at this year's team, what do you see as the strengths uh, early in the season? Honestly, team chemistry. I, I truly believe that these girls care about each other. Um, we've always tried to have a family atmosphere. Uh, and I think this team has really embraced that. They they really are truly happy when someone else does something well. And they're right there to pick somebody up when somebody does make a mistake. And I think a lot of that attributes to our senior leadership, two of which are right here. You know, but Emma Hoffman and Jenna Bovenzi are also captains. And it starts with them. You know, all the great teams that I've coached have great leadership. Um, and these four, and, and there's other great leaders on this team. Just because you're a captain doesn't always mean that you're the greatest leader. We have other great leaders, but it started with these four seniors. And there's truly a bond in this group that I haven't seen in a while that I'm, I'm really looking forward to. And I think that's their greatest asset to this point. Maeve, when, when we talk about team chemistry, what does that, coach has said all the time, what does it mean for the girls? Like, how do you how do you build those bonds? Is there stuff you do away from the field? How, how do you do that? Um, it's definitely some stuff that we do away from the field, like off-season practices. We'd have practices before school where we play wall ball, um, do a lot of get a lot of touches in. And I think, you know, just being together more often has helped us build that chemistry. You know, in years past, we haven't had a great age disparity, and this year we do. Yet I still feel like our chemistry is better than any that I've ever had on this team and I think it's definitely just playing together in the off team of that in terms of building the program it doesn't happen overnight it doesn't happen alone 
Um, the support from the community in addition to the buy-in from the student athletes and their families? Well, listen, I mean, you just said it, you know, we need everybody, but I, I do think the thing with us is we've built a culture, you know, there, there's a winning tradition. I mean, everyone always says that winning breeds success, you know, and, and that's what's happened here at HFL. You know, the, the first four or five teams um, did a great job of getting us to that moment when we finally won our first one in 2008. And then it's, as we talked about, it's just become an expectation. And, and we have a great youth program. You know, right now we have a great group of people running it and, and it's just going to continue to thrive, you know, well beyond me. It's because of the community and the fact that the youth program has built these girls to be as successful as they are. And you are the only coach in the history of the program, correct, Kevin? That is correct, yeah. Yeah, we, I thought uh, so. We okay. We were a varsity team for the first time in 2004. But that group, we started them out as a modified program in, in the year uh, 19, or 2000. We went modified JV for a couple of years and then went to varsity. And I've yeah. been the only at and that was, point. Back then it was Pena and East Rochester was the standard and they finally broke through over that. And now HFL is certainly the standard. And if I remember correctly, he's, he'll have the name ready. I think the first college player you ever produced, Kevin, went to Mercyhurst or Gannon. One of those two. Am I wrong? Christina uh, no. Shunk. Shunk. Yeah, good for you. Krista Shunk went to Gannon. Krista University. Shunk. Yeah, All that right. is cool. So that's a good transition. Whitley, what do you like about Mercyhurst? What are you excited about? Why why that college for you? Um, I think the campus is really beautiful, and um, we just got a new um, head coach, um, Sam Struss, and she's really great. She's really full of energy, and I think that there's a really great – um, team atmosphere there, and it's really welcoming, and I just love it. And, and Maeve, Maeve uh, I, Harvard, obviously, you used the term age disparity earlier in the interview, so we, we know the vocabulary is there, but what, what about <laughs> Harvard uh, drew you in? Um, just It's a culmination of factors for me. It's the world-class academics. It's the great atmosphere you know, with amazing people from all over the world, the ability to work with top professors and get amazing network op networking opportunities and most of all the lacrosse team is like super tight knit you know having all of these responsibilities academically i feel like brings you closer together athletically you know we definitely help each other and also playing for arguably the best young coaching staff in the country with devin wills becca block dempsey arsenault and sammy joe tracy all of them are super young yet are just a wealth of knowledge and i'm super grateful to be playing for them Harvard, feel free to snip this and use it on your promotional campaign if you'd like. Um, the quiet, so you visited, obviously, Harvard right already. You've, all right. So the question is, have you had a lobster roll from Mike's yet in downtown Boston? I've not had a lobster roll from Mike's yet, no. Okay. No, I really, that's a, it's that's it's a dessert. You, you you will find out. You will find out what that is. Um, Devo's travel tips. Yeah. we had <laughs> where, um, Before we wrap, though, I want to ask, and I want Coach to have a moment here because, honestly, I, I've covered a lot of these games, and they're tough. They were tough to cover at the time. And by the time he lost the third or fourth state championship game, um, and a couple, the first couple weren't pretty, uh, actually, actually, the second one, I don't remember the first score. The first the 2009 Shoreham Wading River beat in the state title game. You lost five times in the state finals. Second game against Shoreham Wading River was 11 to 9. My research let me down last night as I was watching basketball. Um, I don't remember the first score of the first game against Shoreham Wading River, Coach. Do you remember that? You probably do, it, knowing it, you. Was it, it close? It, 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 it was not very close. No. Okay. But then you made a big, you, then you got close, 11 to 9. Then you lost to Mount Sinai 8 to 5. In 2015, so nine, nine, 2009, 2012, loss, loss. Then a couple year gap, eight to five Mount Sinai, and then in 17 Mount Sinai, 15 to four, and then finally in 18 Cold Spring Harbor. I'm not 18 to three. I'm not sure which one of those years, but I remember I asked you. I said, "What's it going to take to break through?" And you gave me a great answer, and I'm sure it's very similar. What's it going to take to break through? Because we we get to the semis and finals a lot in Section Five, but we don't win a lot. Um, what do we do? What do we need to do? Well, you know, listen, it's it's simple. You know, they have played, when they go to practice, they have 24, 25 girls, 12 to 15 of them year in and year out are Division One or Division Two players, and they've already committed as juniors and seniors. So I'm not even talking about their exceptional freshmen and sophomores yet. 
But that's something here in Rochester. We have great players. I don't want anyone to mis- misunderstand that. We have great players. But what, we, what we're lacking right now is the middle to the back half of the roster. We cannot create in practice what I believe they do in practice. When, they, when if we make a mistake, I can't pull a girl out and bring someone else in to replace her. And I know this isn't politically correct, but to fight for that starting position. You know, I can't pull someone out and make them believe that they're not going to start because they know we got three subs. They're going to start. So it's very <laughs> difficult for us to create the practices that they can do on the island. When they practice, it's legit like playing a very, very high intensity game every day in practice. So we're not able to develop our middle to bottom third players as well as I think we need to, to be able to win those illustrious state finals. I mean, you look at Pittsburgh and when they won it, they had a very deep roster. They had a lot of great players, not just one through six. They had one through 17. Um, And I truly think that that is the difference. Well, He's made a tremendous difference in, in Section 5 uh, in, in the HFL. Steve, go ahead. You, I'll, yeah, you the last no, word. I just thought a, a natural follow-up was like, <clears throat> how does that happen? How do you develop and take that next step? You you know what needs to be done. The identifying is part of it, but the, the following through seems to be the, the more difficult. Well, I, and I'll tell you, this is not going to be the answer that's going to answer it because I truly am old school. I believe these, these student-athletes should be playing three sports. I don't like the specialization. I like them to enjoy their high school experience. Mm -hmm. Um, To truly do it, you got to get 18 girls, 20 girls that will be with you year round. And that's what makes club special because club can do that. And that's great. But high school is difficult for to do that. I'm a high school guy. I want these girls to have great high school experiences. I want them to look back at their four years in high school and remember the great memories that their school gave to them. That's what I have with Rush Henrietta Raw. I have great memories of my four years. I played three sports. And then in the summertime, I then played my favorite sport. That's not the way things are today. So I do think that, yeah, that's great that Long Island wins those state titles. And don't get me wrong, that's our goal this year. But there's different approaches to get there. And at the end of the day, if, if the ones we didn't win, I'm okay with it because I think we're providing our student athletes with a great experience. And that's all that matters, the memories. And, and that was not politically incorrect. No, no. <laughs> no I, I, that I, was spot on. Enjoy high school. <clears throat> I mean, sports is just part of the what it's education through athletics, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so tough getting anything out of this guy. He's such a tough interview, O'Connell. I, I don't know how we, how we do it. Uh, ladies, best of luck to you and the Cougars. I hope we're talking uh, sometime in mid-June about about the whole shoot match and you guys win the whole thing. So um, good luck to you. I know that I can tell from the tone of his voice, he, he has high expectations and he thinks this group can do it. So I wish you the best of luck, all right? Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. KO, another knockout interview. I appreciate it. Good to talk to you and see you again, my friend. I appreciate you too. You guys be good. Hopefully we'll see you in the spring. All right, thanks for watching us right here on Rock Sports Now, the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. Talk to you again soon, folks.